into our presentation uh, today about enabling SMEs to play like the big ones. I'm Davide Crescione, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Neashorn.com and of uh, DC Services, uh, the company Neashorn.com belongs to. Uh, a few words uh, about starting. Uh, I spent the largest part of my career up to now, around 25 years, working for large corporations uh, within the um, IT, the system market, and all. On both sides, being a customer, having been CIO with uh, global responsibilities, and having been for larger e companies, supplier, also with global responsibilities. So I bring with me this view of uh, being a customer and being supplier and connecting uh, teams, relationships, and processes, supply chain, the key word, um, worldwide. This uh, um, was my experience with large corporation till a few years ago. And then uh, I decided also to start my dream and to bring these uh, capabilities, uh, making them available for small, medium enterprises. So to leave a little bit uh, the, big, uh, the big corporation to start working in a more agile world with um, shorter decision ways and talking directly to companies which are a little bit smaller, agile, and sometimes quicker in implementing the new innovations. Um, the topic uh, why we created near shoring and why we focus on near shoring comes a little bit from this experience. And the idea is to enable uh, the small medium enterprises to play like the big ones. That means mainly in terms of uh, um, scaling up, scaling down resources and having this flexibility, uh, let's say from the team building exercise up to the cost, which is the typical flexibility large enterprises already have. We look at this picture, we can see uh, the pictures from 2019 on the left side, and it reflects the numbers of uh, free IT resources on the Gemma market at that time, which were, according to Bitcom, 124,000 people were missing on the, on the market. Uh, we know in 2020, there's been uh, a year ago, a little bit slowed down because of the corona crisis, but now, according to what we see from the, our customers and our suppliers, our delivery partners, the situation is pretty much the same than one year ago. So we covered in terms of speed of projects and also in terms of size of projects. So we, we are all, all the industries running again. Why do we think that this part is extremely critical? Um, this fact is extremely critical for medium enterprises. I know uh, pretty well the, the market in Munich, this is the city where, uh, where I live since many years. But I know pretty well also the other cities in, in Germany. And the situation is that having this big hole in uh, available resources for small medium enterprises is extremely critical, and extremely difficult getting to skill that the people coming from the university. Uh, looking at Munich again, yeah, there is a huge fight for every student living with a good note at the university with in IT, uh, in the IT domains, uh, from all companies that are discovering themselves being IT companies, like Siemens, which is becoming more and more IT company, like and, Alliance, which is more and more IT. The same uh, is valid for BMW, but also from traditional IT companies like uh, Entity Data, like um, uh, Salesforce, like Microsoft. All of them are growing very, very fast. For small, medium enterprises, here I think about companies between some 60 people up to some thousand, still in some cases uh, perceived as medium and small enterprises really, really critical getting new people. So very, very difficult. If you look at sometimes at the Gaussian distribution of employees with some of our customers, we see that the peak is around the age of 40, 45, but actually the majority of the people they have in the, in the team is between 40 and 40. This gives, as a consequence, other additional problems in terms of skills and capabilities linked with, it, uh, let's say, with this uh, set of um, workforces because sometimes we miss the newest uh, technologies like artificial intelligence, the newest topic coming up very quickly for the, um, for the industry. But when I talk to, um, to customers, we see that uh, the perception of uh, near shoring or offshoring anyhow, the off offshoring is always connected, coming from the, the picture some years ago, to mainly a way to cut costs and reduce costs. We say it's much more than that, it's actually about Surviving on the IT market because if uh, you are not able to scale up quickly in the time your customer wants you to scale up, somebody else will do and somebody else will take projects for you. 
So one of the critical questions we asked typically is, did you already perform a project or did you miss revenues because you did not have available resources to staff a project? If the answer is yes, then you are in the critical way. It's not only about missing resources, it's not only about missing revenues and opportunities, it's because somebody else is taking this. Sometimes even the big ones were coming, let's say a little bit down and eating piece of market share from the small medium enterprises. And somebody is entering within your customer in your typical customer domain where you may eventually have been for 10 years and uh, some competitors are entering. So this is very, very critical. And we see here actually that there is a lot of potential which is untapped. And uh, we have defined this as our mission. We understand ourselves and me as being, uh, I define myself as a European guy. Uh, I'm Italian as uh, let's say the place where I was uh, born and where I grew up. And my roots come only up probably once every four years when there is the soccer world championship. Yeah, obviously I'm Italian without exception, but for the rest I understand myself as a European and uh, it's a bridge of culture between uh, culture that I know because I'm much, much pretty close to my, where I grew up and the culture coming from Germany and the leads from Germany. And we see that there is this uh, need of uh, building bridges and uh, also trust between uh, different countries. And uh, here, if we do this, we can really uh, make available to customers and to uh, delivery companies from outside a huge potential. In uh, many countries around Germany, like uh, Serbia, Poland, uh, Croatia, Slovenia, Hungary, Bulgaria, there, are, there is a beautiful youth, as I say, uh, with very aggressive, extremely talented, and all of them uh, willing to go the last mile and extremely very well prepared and skilled in IT. And this industry is coming up. And here we have a huge amount, I would say not huge, but a very, very, very big amount of uh, people available on the market that are looking for interesting projects. If we look at our home market in Germany, we see that here are the most interesting projects going on in Europe. Being this in automotive, being this in healthcare, being this in insurance. Here we have major companies that are pushing innovations all over the chain. And so we want to bring together these needs here in, uh, in Germany of in needs for innovation and potential for innovation together with the needs of our delivery partners from uh, all uh, the region around us. Why did we focus on nearshoring? Actually, it's really because our key perception is that shoring as a whole exercise is not anymore about saving the last euro on the hourly rate of our consumption. Um, this, is, this was the tendency some years ago. When it was everything about automation and uh, maintenance of applications, like application maintenance for SAP. It's a typical area that was outsourced some years ago to um, Asian countries, starting with India, then moving to Thailand and some other countries very far away. Our experience is now being uh, uh, in agile mode. So with agile developments, it's very, very difficult to work with different time zones. And having also a close culture and eventually also the possibility to physically meet, uh, except that they will hope that Corona will allow that uh, to us in the next month, is one of the key elements. So we stay within the two, three hours. This is the apply. Three hours just because mainly of Portugal and Turkey, which are very, very interesting countries in terms of available IT resources. And mainly to the other countries which come from Italy up to the right, up to Poland, to the right side. Uh, many countries, um, let's say, uh, border with, with Germany, where we have a lot of potential that uh, we can uh, make available to our uh, Coming to us, uh, so nearshoring.com was created a few years ago. Uh, and uh, actually the brand is pretty new. We created a company a few years ago. And now with some partners, what we do, we understand ourselves as uh, agile advisors on our sourcing topics. And uh, we consult our customers on their trip to uh, nearshoring. We, uh, we see quite often that the approach is done by customers in a very tactical way, selecting countries depending on some uh, tactical reasons, like where they know somebody and not really coming from what is the, the, the vertical industry I'm serving, which kind of data I'm working with. I'm working for in public domain and working in healthcare domain and working in banking domain. So also coming from the aspects of the data and then taking into consideration if one country is a NATO country, is a European country, is a candidate coming to the European Union or 
if we also want to work with customers, with um, delivery partners, for instance, from Belarus, we also have in our network. We consult our customers in the overall trip, in the business planning, also in the implementation, but we also support them uh, building up new teams. And we come up with a model that is called BOT, which is also sometimes new, is uh, the idea to create an own delivery center abroad and uh, we can support our customers to realize this through the best ways to do this to a local partner who can act as a kind of uh, shared service organization on site. Uh, in addition, and this is uh, we're not being at the core part of our activities, it's still a relevant part of our business, is providing short-term resources, short-term in terms of when we make them available. We have today a, um, approach to around 6,000 consultants in, uh, in the near shore countries. We are planning to double this within the, the next months. We already have some companies which are in our internal due diligence process to become partners of nearshore.com. Uh, let's say nearshore.com certified partners. This is on the way to happen. And uh, this is a little bit the network, the, the, the amount of capabilities that we can bring to our customers. So we can uh, we have a broad spectrum of uh, technical skills available, uh, going from a mandatory, which is obviously the core topic today, uh, around automotive uh, healthcare with certified uh, people and very very vertical consultants on the two markets, going down to the more traditional SAP, to the more traditional software development in uh, in uh, web and the mobile application. The last. Um, that I can mention uh, in the, the 10 minutes of our presentation is why choosing us? Why nearshoring.com? We are, according to our information, uh, we have been looking at the market obviously for a while and we are in the market since a while. We are the only indep independent advisor. So we do not belong to anybody. So, so we're not also linked to any of our uh, delivery partners in the, in the regions, in the nearshoring regions. And so therefore we're totally free to find for our customer, we say, the best fit solution. Identifying exactly the need for your process, for your project, sorry, and then uh, um, bringing you forward in uh, your nearshoring uh, endeavor. So if uh, nearshoring is for you a topic, if you have already lost some revenues because you do not have the resources, if you have difficulties finding resources, we are available uh, um, to talk, please reach out to us. Uh, David Crishon at nearshon.com or at info at nearshon.com. We will be glad to uh, to talk to you and to exchange first ideas about your current status and what Iowa experience says, what, what the next step.